What is up my dudes, it's Pac-Man here, and today I wanted to bring you guys the most common mistakes that I see while playing Siege in 2021. I don't want to waste your time with a big intro, but I will quickly ask that if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. We are so, so close to 100k, so let's smash that goal together. But without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to cover today is basically backing yourself into a corner without a, uh, you know, like an exit plan already uh, in mind. Um, so let's say the site is uh, trophy stats, so you're defending this site. Um, a lot of the time what people will do as defenders is basically play from, uh, you know, aviator and game side to try and hold study for as long as possible because enemy teams do often like to rotate and push through here to... Um, to attack uh, trophy stat, right? So what you want to be careful of is just when you're playing this position, you just want to be very aware of timing. And you basically, when you know you shoot a few drones here, you're going to want to back off slightly. Shoot a few, a couple more drones and back off. What I do see people do, let's say these walls are actually reinforced, right? So these two walls here and these two walls here. What you see people do a lot of the time is they'll shoot a few drones blah 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 and then they go okay let's rotate back into vault okay right so then they'll be playing in vault and uh, especially if you're doing this alone if you're playing in vault and once you kind of put yourself in vault um like let's imagine i'm a, I'm a player without a shotgun it's really it's going to be like a jaeger or a malusi for the most part doing a roam like this or a muzzy um so what you're going to be kind of left with now is uh, you're just kind of in a position where there's no rotate out because they're going to be pushing uh, bookcases over there and they're going to be pushing uh, study door, uh, aviator door, right? And uh, sometimes they'll even open this line of sight here with a banner and then you're just kind of trapped in vault, right? Rather than what you could have done is you could have maybe shot a couple of drones, shot a few drones, and then as they start to open this wall here, then you can start backing out Backing out, oh, I did not mean to vault, <laughs> but backing out, uh, back out here to uh, Skull. Right, so we can back out here to, to Skull and you can shoot a couple more drones again. And just before they take 90, so maybe if they've taken the 90 cam out, you can even rotate uh, back onto Red Stairs here, or you can rotate back out further. But that's just like a general one, one specific example for that. There's tons and tons of other, you know, places that you can you can kind of back yourself into. Like another one here is um, astronomy. So when the site is not um, a trophy stat, if you play behind this desk here, a lot of, I'll see a lot of people kind of playing behind this desk, trying to hold bathroom. And the reality is like, you're kind of trapped, hey? Like, because most of the time, let's say if you don't actually have a rotate here, then the only way out is basically through this doorway or over Astro stairs and both are covered by attacker positions right so you're not going to be able to get down these stairs without swinging into the guy in bathroom and you're not going to be able to get out split without swinging into the guy that's on propel um so if you're in here just be prepared to die the best thing the best 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 case scenario you can do really is just trade yourself so get a kill and then get get traded out that's ideal but a lot of the time they're just going to dump flashes on you maybe throw a grenade in over the top and you're just kind of going to get pinched out and squished and uh, that's just not what you want, right? So like the two ways to counter that is to potentially, you know, have a little rotate here. Um, that's one way, but you do need to be cautious that this window, because uh, they can just spray you down as you start to rotate out. They can't get an angle on you behind the desk, but they can definitely spray you as you start to cross here. Um, so you can do that, right? But in even potentially an even better way uh, to do it is to just put like one Rio up here and play behind trophy, right? So you can support Brick's door, you can stand here and support uh, bathroom. You can watch the bathroom push. If someone goes to repel in, you can swing out on them. And uh, you know now you've got more exit routes. You can go and push back out here. If the site's AVG, you can start working your way back up uh, 90 long, as long as there's no one on the window, obviously. You can start working out uh, your way back 90 short, sorry. Uh, or you can just hop over the edge and uh, try and either rotate up red or rotate all the way around brown. The point is, it's not. I'm not trying to give you too much, uh, too specific an example. I know that was very specific, but I'm trying to get just get into your get into your heads when you're going for a roam. Just make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position where you just you can't really escape. All right, like so. And and you know, I'm all about contesting entry. I think that's kind of meta at the moment. Is by like going to where you think they're going to enter and fighting them before they you know even come near the site. Um, but like, I'm all about that, but just make sure that your positioning is correct and make sure that you always have an exit plan in mind when doing so. Okay, the second point I wanted to bring up today is basically sprinting and ADSing. Now, I know this is a, you know, a, a topic that you probably heard a lot about before, and for some of you guys, it might seem a little bit basic, but for a lot of you guys, like, look, the reality is it still happens like right the way through plat. I know it does, I see it, like most days, right? 
the, the reality is people just don't fully understand how important it is. Um, and that's just the truth. And basically to give you guys an understanding for those of you who don't know, uh, basically when we sprint, right, there's a, there's a, it takes us longer to actually get rounds off when we're coming from a sprint. So let me just show you how fast you can shoot uh, from a sprint, right? So if we're in full sprint and then I try and shoot, see that lag time? Right, that's, that, there's, a, there's a decent amount of lag time when you go from a full sprint to a shot. There's about a second there, a second they're missing a half a second. Um, and it is minuscule, but I'm telling you, it's super, super important. Now let's compare that to uh, just walking into a, into a spray, right? So just walking. So basically the difference is you can start hip firing straight away when you're, when you're walking in comparison to... Right, compared to basically hip firing straight away right into your crosshair coming up. That's the difference between walking around and uh, sprinting around. And then compare that then to just having your your crosshair, uh, you know, ADS, right? So just being ADS the whole time. So let's look at this. Obviously it's instant, right? So for the most part, as best you can, you, you kind of just want to be ADS, right? Because think about the difference in speed of this, right? If someone swings this corner here, think about this, right? Swings the corner. Okay, you see that little lag, right? So swings the corner in comparison to this. Like if he just swings, I know it's kind of hard to explain, right? But like when you're ADS, you're, you're, you're just so much more ready. You don't have that half second lag behind you. And I promise you, it's getting you killed. If you're sprinting around the map the whole time, especially into gunfights, it's getting you killed. Um, in comparison to just being ADS, right? So just always be basically aiming down your sights. And that's why it's important to make sure that your sensitivity um, is, you know, uh, suitable with doing that. I actually had to increase my sensitivity because for, for the longest time, every time I'd want to change, I'd have to be like flicking my mouse around. And I'm still low. I'm still a lot lower than the majority of you guys. But um, yeah, I had to increase it so that I could basically stay ADS uh, for more time because I knew it was getting me killed, right? Now, the second part that I wanted to speak about, the, the, the third thing I wanted to speak about, my apologies, uh, kind of ties in with this. And it's basically crosshair placement, right? So with crosshair placement, a lot of people kind of kind of you know, see crosshair placement as just as long as, as long as my crosshair is head height, then I'm pretty good, right? So as long as my crosshair is always at head height, then I'm, I'm pretty solid. Or even it, you know, like crouch height, if you think they're gonna pop around that corner for a crouch, um, you can get them done. And while that is a very important part of crosshair placement, you know, like let's say if you're holding an angle here, right? So if we're holding this angle, yeah, you probably want it at head height so that if they strafe across, you can kind of get the shot on them. But if they, um, Another another part of uh, crosshair placement that people kind of often overlook, I would say, uh, is basically x-raying kind of door frames and stuff, right? So let's say if you want to take a shot on someone at this door frame, door frame, what do you think is the difference between this, right? So I want to shoot him at, you know, head height level. What's the difference between this? All right, so yeah, my crosshair never left head height, which is good, All right? So I'm kind of like coming in around the angle compared to this, right? When you kind of, when you, with a bit of map knowledge, what you can do is you can basically imagine where where it's gonna be through walls, right? So you, with, with map knowledge, you're able to kind of keep your crosshair on the door frame there. The same thing goes with, you know, basically, imagine if you're trying to shoot someone on the top of Astro stairs here, right? I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get it pretty close, like, like that. Oh, sorry, I have no bullets left. But basically, you'll be able to get it pretty close there just because you know where the map is. Uh, you know, you know what's going on. So it's it's very very important to kind of have your crosshair not only at the the, the head height that you want it, but also almost X-raying the angle that you want to shoot with, right? Though those two things there, not sprinting around the whole time, kind of having your your gun at ready, right? Having being ADS at a given moment, and then also kind of tracking the angle that you want to shoot is just. It's gonna just lift your game no end. I promise you if you're not doing it You really need to put a focus on it Like if you want to shoot someone behind the bar there You kind of aim behind the bar. You don't have to do the whole crouch thing uh, with it I'm, I made a video on uh, kind of like crouch peek and stuff in the past So if you want me to do another video on that, I'm more than happy to um, but for the most part uh, It's just about the crosshair placement nothing nothing fancy just understanding 
the layout of the map so that you're able to kind of always have your crosshair that was a bit off <laughs> but always have your crosshair at roughly where it needs to be it's just gonna it's gonna save your life and it's gonna get you more kills i promise you dudes okay guys so the fourth and final thing that i wanted to touch on today is basically um angle exposure now what i mean by angle exposure is and and what, how it can be a common mistake is people you know a lot of people i see them kind of get almost tunnel vision with a person or with a gunfight right so let's say if they know someone is going to be in this door frame or if they if they drone and they see okay this guy's in this door frame right here um and what they what they do is they'll kind of swing out to shoot this guy off this door frame which is it's fine like it's not not the, not a bad move but you know especially imagine if they are on this if the bomb is here the bomb is trophy stat what you have to be aware of is, is the different angles that you're exposed to uh, during that so let's say you're holding master master door here and someone says he's in split he's in split you can swing him and then people go out to go like no worries and try and take that gunfight but they don't realize what they're what they're actually doing in the midst of getting to this guy here and getting to an angle where you can actually kill him uh, you're actually exposing yourself uh, to this angle it's kind of what I wanted to touch on, like just basically angle exposure and, and being aware of the, the angles that you're exposing yourself to at a given moment, right? Same thing, if, if you see someone that's, uh, if someone is playing, like you know someone's playing Vault and you go to push up to get this guy and someone's playing 90 just holding landing, you, you're dead, right? Or if you're coming from here and someone says, yeah, he's holding 90 and you go, okay, I got him. No worries, but you get shot from someone on maps. So you just need to be really aware of the, the angles that you are exposing yourself to at a given time. Or if you know there's no one 90, you go to push up on maps and someone's playing red. So as you push through the map, these are the positions that you need to be droning and checking for. It's the angles that you're going to expose yourself to. And this goes for any map in any scenario. When you're taking, when you're taking, going through a room, right? Like when you're going, when you're going to take a gunfight, think about where you can be shot from. You can be shot from someone swinging from over here. You can be shot from someone close on Tetris. You can be shot from someone on any angle there. Maybe a, a deep angle into China. Usually that's open, right? It, it's a hard one to kind of quantify and explain, but you just need to be aware of the angles that you're exposing yourself to at any given time. And for the most part, what you want to do is you want to try and either cover them angles, like, you know, be aware of the angles that you're playing, or like, you know, like, so let's say if we take it back to this original example, what you want to do is you want to you know maybe so you're covering uh trophy you have a look here you check here really quick nothing there and then you can swing out right so you just want to be kind of like face checking them or you know preferably droning that area itself um or choose a choose a different route you know try and try and go somewhere that's a little less exposed maybe there's a rotate there so i'm going to keep my body tight rather than stand in the middle where i can be swung from here here or here or someone close obviously what i might do is i might stand a little bit tighter Clear the rotate, no one there. Step out, clear the deer, push back, clear this side, and then kind of take my angles one by one rather than, you know, ah, <laughs> just taking them all at the same time. Uh, it's another fundamental concept that you need to be aware of, and uh, just being aware of it, I guess, is gonna is gonna put you in the right direction. So just always be aware to the angles that you're exposing yourself to at a given time. So there you have it guys. Those are some of the most common mistakes that I see during my time in the mess that is ranked. So hopefully after watching this video, you will walk away with a little more knowledge on things you should be trying to avoid. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give that like button a massive smash. Uh, it means the world to me and it really does help out. But without blabbering on, I will see you in the next one, my dudes. Peace.